Hello and welcome to The Gaggle, where we challenge and, if necessary, destroy media narratives. I'm George Samueli, and with me, of course, is uh, Peter Lavelle, uh, co-founder of The Gaggle and uh, host of RT show Crosstalk. Uh, Peter, uh, this uh, Supreme Court uh, crisis uh, in the United States uh, is getting more and more intense. Uh, President Trump uh, gave an interview um, this morning in which he disclosed that he will name someone to the Supreme Court on Friday uh, or Saturday. Um, I don't think this is going to have anyone happy because the um, his conservative base are raring to go and they were expecting someone to be named today or at the latest tomorrow. So uh, they, they're going to have to wait till at least Friday now. Um, but it's, he's already made clear that he's going to be a woman. It's far from clear yet which woman. Um, uh, there are clearly partisans on the sides of this uh, judge, Amy uh, Barrett, but there are also uh, quite severe critics of her who really don't think much of her and go for, I think, Justice Balboa, I mean, you know, the, the one in Florida. Um, so it's... It, it, People assume that the battle lines are going to be about, oh, is it Roe v. Wade? Is that the key issue? Mm-hmm. But it may be something else. Uh, and I suspect that the, one of the big issues now is going to be the lockdown, because these are being challenged now in the courts. Last week, there was a major ruling by a federal uh, Pennsylvania court uh, saying, basically saying these lockdowns are unconstitutional. And I suspect this is going to be a, a, a big issue uh, among Republicans where do you stand uh, on the lockdown? You think they're constitutional or not? So what's your take, Peter? I think that it's very difficult for me to answer because um, I'm not a trained um, trained in the legal field. But um, if you think about all of the things that the country has gone through since its existence, we've, got, we've had civil war, um, we've had depressions, we've had all kinds of things, and we've uh, guarded our institutions. Um, my inclination is that they're they're unconstitutional uh, a denial of rights because um, when th- these rights these th- they're they're not malleable you know they're not like but well, we're gonna put a hit pause I mean that's why there are rights okay because they, 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 through thick and thin you have to respect it I mean the easiest one of course is religious um, observance okay. Which I'm I'm totally against law. I mean, if you have a liquor store open and an abortion clinic open, oh, you don't allow a church open. I mean, that doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, you can go buy a gun, but you can't get communion. I mean, explain that to me. All right. right. And it seems to me, from what I've seen in the news, um, the, um, the 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 pastors, the priests, the rabbis uh, that want their congregation to come together, they go to great lengths to protect their congregation, all right? I mean, again, using the analogy, uh, going to an abortion clinic is to kill someone. Uh, Going to a liquor store uh, is to inebriate yourself, okay? I mean, uh, personally, I think that these are very uh, uh, different things, and and, and you have to, you you should recognize the hypocrisy of it here. I mean, obviously, this is all about control, okay? What you can do or what you can't do, and that is, the really rubs me the wrong way because who the hell are you to i mean some uh deputy district uh, uh state attorney in texas is going to tell me what the constitution means really you're going to do that right, so right. you know um yes. look in, in in all fairness i would like to hear all sides but to be honest with you, it just it just rubs me the wrong way because you're very selective in what rights we can we can practice, and you know, and the very fact that they're rights, you you better have a really really good reason why I can't. Uh, well, I, I think so, and I, and I think what's um, important to remember is that uh, in the uh, U.S. Constitution, there really are no. Exceptions. Except- it doesn't say, well, we can have First Amendment rights, but um, when there's a pandemic or, or there's a war or uh, some kind of a international crisis, then your First Amendment rights go out of the window uh, or, um, you know, your Fourth Amendment rights or whatever rights. It, there are no exceptions. I mean, and, and, you know, after all, there are constitutions that do have all these exceptions, and they are, unfortunately, very weak constitutions. I mean, the Stalin constitution was, you know, beautifully crafted 
But there were all these exceptions. Yeah, well, yeah, you have all these rights, except, of course, when the state is uh, threatened, then you lose your rights. There are no such exceptions uh, in, the, um, in the U.S. Constitution. So that's why uh, the rulings that uh, the pro-lockdown people rely on are always court rulings. It's what some judge maybe 100 years ago decided. I think the one they talk about is Jacobson. Um, is a long time ago. Uh, that has to be you know, the guiding ruling for today. And that just seems to me a very flimsy kind of an argument. But what, you know what it does, George? I mean, and we've talked about this and we will talk about it for the foreseeable future, is this over-reliance on the courts. And the only reason why there's this over-reliance on the courts because you can get political decisions out of the courts today, not legal decisions, because that's essentially what they're making is political decisions. And what this does is it degrades the democratic process. You know, what, what does your city council say? What does your state government say? What does the state senate say? I'm more interested in what elected officials have to say. You know why? Because you can turn around and say, you're fired, <laughs> okay? Yes, yes, that, that's, that's exactly it. And that's why uh, you know, America is in a <laughs> bad situation with these unelected judges. And these judges just simply make a ruling. Um, I'm now stopping the federal government from doing whatever it was elected to do. I think, well, you're just a judge. You're an un unelected judge. Who are you to stop what the federal government is doing? But, you know, it, it would have been, you know, let's give an example, like the Japanese internment um, during the Second World War. You know, I, I really would have liked to have a, a federal judge and say, no, they are citizens of this country. You cannot do that. Uh, in those conditions, yes, I, I would, I would uh, uh, um, uh, welcome uh, a judicial um, uh, perspective on a, an executive order, okay? But now it's all trivialized. I mean, tr Trump has a, an immigration um, uh, uh, executive order, and you know, I mean, the snap of a finger, somebody in San Francisco says, no, 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 no. I mean, that's not the way it was designed. No. It wasn't designed that way, okay? I'm not a constitutional lawyer, but I can read the statutes on, on immigration. The president can do pretty much what he wants, okay? Sure. So, yeah, that, that's, his, that's his prerogative. And I think, you know, again, it's same with the lockdowns. I mean, you have to kind of use a common sense and think, do governors have this power just to shut everything down? I mean, where, where in the Constitution does it say it? They can just close businesses down, close all assemblies down, close churches down. I mean, where, where does that come from? And I think, you, you know, it, it's been surprising that uh, it hasn't been challenged uh, so far, or particularly vigorously, but it is being challenged now. And now we've got this ruling in Pennsylvania, and I think there's going to be more of this because no doubt the, uh, the Pennsylvania government is going to put a, try to put a stay on the, uh, the, the judge's order. Um, and then it'll obviously go up to the higher courts, and then it'll probably end up in the Supreme Court, which is why this issue of uh, who's going to be on the Supreme Court is so important. And, and it doesn't sound to me like Amy Barrett is particularly a, a, a strong civil liberties uh, proponent. I think that she's, uh, it's, you know, she, uh, she may well be sympathetic to the, uh, the, the, basically the government's argument, yes, we have absolute right to shut everything down uh, in perpetuity. Um, so I think that's why this may well be a key issue and why Amy Barrett's uh, position is weak. Uh, in addition to that, you know, she has written an article uh, saying that Catholic judges uh, have to recuse themselves from cases involving uh, capital punishment. Now, you know, I, I, I'm not a supporter of the capital punishment, but nonetheless, it's a problem when a Catholic judge says that Catholic judges have to recuse themselves. And I have a problem with somebody that pot potentially could be sitting on the Supreme Court that has that opinion. We don't have religious tests. We don't. That is explicit in the Constitution. No religious tests, okay? And um, a well-known conservative commentator, I don't want to go into names right now, but, you know, went, uh, went after um, uh, Congressman um, Omar about having her uh, headdress. And, um, and, and I, you know, oh, I don't have anything to do with Omar's politics, obviously, okay? But... Uh, no, what what, what the, the 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 Congress came, uh, came together and say, will we make an exception for allow her to wear her religious headgear? And I think she should be allowed to wear it, okay? Because we don't have religious tests, okay? 
And 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 that's fine. I mean, I, I, I'm obviously against a burqa, but you know, a lot of religious faiths have headgear, and I'm willing to respect that as long as you can see their face. Okay. What I'm saying is that you have to you have to show flexibility and some tolerance. But if you're going to have someone saying because you're a Catholic and you're on a a, 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 a bench, you are obligated or we have to give you a pass. No, that's what the job is. The job is to be a jurist. Right. But it's also an interesting issue. Um, I mean, it kind of segues to, to another issue, which is that the, um, the justices of the Supreme Court are a remarkably undiverse group of people. They all, to a man and woman, went to Harvard or Yale. Yeah. Uh, they all moved their way into the uh, the court system, always the federal courts. Um, in terms of religion, they are almost all either Catholics or Jews. Not, and again, you know, they're, they're not one Protestant. In a country that is, was founded by Protestants and is still largely Protestant. So it's a very strange, and again, you know, the candidates but, but, but apparently no, are Catholics. So but don't you, but don't you strangely you, unrepresentative. But don't you think, I have a different spin on it here. Don't you think because it was founded on uh, Protestant ethics that Jews and Catholics could become members of the Supreme Court? Well, that may be, but, it, but it's, yeah. still, it's still amazing that they've, they've all been kind of sidelined. I mean, there was a, not so long ago, there used to be a majority of Protestants on that court. They've, they've, they've all been pushed out. There used to be people who weren't even lawyers or on the Supreme Court. Um, uh, and again, they've been pushed out. So it's a very narrow range of people who are now nominated uh, to the court. Uh, and uh, and I think that's reflected in probably kind of mediocre rulings, to be honest. Uh, it's hard to think of any major, good, intellectually weighty uh, rulings. Well, of well, let, me, let me segue uh, to another point here, which I think is really important, is that um, as, the, as the GOP um, uh, you know, rubs its hands, you know, I mean, Making an announcement today or tomorrow, I think, would be uncouth. I, I, I mean, at least put the woman at rest, please. Okay. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a bleeding heart or anything like that, but I do believe in a sense of public decorum because you know both sides have shown themselves that you know they, they, they can always go lower. Okay. So I am not for that, and everyone knows that I, I, I was hardly a supporter of the judicial view of of Ginsburg, hardly. Okay. Um, but what, what is interesting is what the Republicans are grappling with now, and I knew this was going to happen. Are they going to push the cultural war or are they going to push that insidious libertarian strain? OK, and, and, and of course, these delusional Democrats and wokists and lefties and all that, they don't they can't even begin to comprehend the argument I want to make here because, you know, I don't you know. The cultural issue is something that, you know, is, is very, very important to a lot of mainstream Republicans. But it is the libertarian, you know, what 5% of the party, okay, maybe 15% of the leadership, you know, they have a disproportionate uh, sway in the party, okay? And so that's what they're gonna have to be battling about. And of course, Gorsuch and uh, Kavanaugh didn't come up uh, as expected here. So, and that was on the cultural side here. So there is a bit of a dilemma going on here. Um, of course, the, 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 the broader view is, is that if they get um, uh, Amy, for example, on the court, well, they, they're, they have a lock for about 30 years, okay? 25, let's be uh, um, a conservative here. But you know what's going to happen, George, if Biden, Harris, Harris, Biden get into power and the, and 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 uh, uh, Chuck Schumer ends up being running the shop in the Senate. They're going to pack the court. They're going to pack it. Yeah, no, no, no question. Once they have uh, the White House uh, and the Senate, uh, they're going to do it. They're going to pack it. But of course, uh, it's a very short range thinking because. It's, you're not going to hold it forever. Uh, sooner or later, the Republicans will be back uh, and they will <laughs> either unpack the court or pack it even more to get their uh, supporters in there. So it's always a, uh, you know, it's always very short range thinking. Uh, just real quick. I mean, how do you unpack it? I, I don't remember. Well, I guess you can do it. You can, I mean, if you can, if you can increase it to uh, 15, you can then go back to nine. Anyway, we have to end it there, Peter. Uh, fascinating discussion. And remember, if you like the gaggle, like, share, and subscribe. See you soon. Bye.